loading in, it's going to be Hunter versus Warlock. And uh, as soon as we see those cards come in, we're going to see what kind of variant Lothar is running. It will be Zoo. Yeah. It is a Zoo deck. Uh, I'm taking a quick look at it here. Uh, and I'm kind of excited for this because we saw the winner, Firebat, uh, talk about how he built his entire BlizzCon lineup around Zoo. And because he felt Zoo is one of the most stable decks in the meta. And that information certainly will have reverberations throughout the community. I think we can see it here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. It's it's one of those decks that will always be strong, both because it's great on the ladder, uh, it's cheap to build, and because it doesn't have a lot of hard counters. It's pretty good about against everything. There are a few decks that can absolutely obliterate it, but those decks tend to be easily countered as well. Uh, with this Undertaker start here from Varanus, I, uh, I think he's off to an amazing start. We might actually see the Soul Fire. There it is. Uh, he will sacrifice some of his card advantage and actually get rid of the coin, which isn't too bad considering his hand. Uh, and that will be able to keep down this potentially insane start from Varanus. Yeah, let me uh, get the overlay here. It's a, it's a little... Oh yeah, of course. Take your time. I will be happy to talk about uh, yeah. these two Savannah High Mains in Varanus' opening hand are going to weigh very heavily on him for, uh, you know, the next four turns. And uh, putting out this Haunted Creeper feels like a really strong move, because usually it can take out a 3-2 and keep one Spectral Spider alive. But with that Owl in Lothar's opening hand, uh, it's a really efficient way to deal with this. You now have two one health minions on the board, which Hunter's not that great at dealing with without Unleash the Hounds or Explosive Trap, which we're seeing less and less of in these modern Hunter builds, mm. since Zoo isn't necessarily as popular on ladder as it used to be, where it used to be every other game. Uh, those cards lose a lot of effect against some of these mid-range or late-game control decks. Yeah, and just a note, guys, it looks like Lothar's stream is s pulled apart at the sides, so it's wider than normal. So uh, the overlay is not going to match exactly because of that. And I think I'm going to favor uh, not blocking the game board and pulling it in like that. You know, I think I it think looks. I think it. I think it looks fantastic either way. Okay. Either side. And yeah, yeah, that looks very, very nice. I think we're nice. going to go full screen here, and we're going to. Some of the logos are going to get a little. Uh, job. But let's talk about the game here. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Of course, I mean, this is a really bad draw from Varanis. Mm hmm. I've got to say, he can't even play this freezing trap because he doesn't want to give an owl back to the. Uh, Back to the zoo, that's just a great way to counter his Savannah High Main, which is the only way he can get back into this. So he just has to play Web Spinner Hero Power on turn four. Mm -hmm. That is an excruciatingly weak play here from Varanus just because God, of yeah. the garbage he has in his hand. I mean it it's I mean this is I mean having the owl come down at you're exactly right is the absolute Ooh. worst thing possible. He does get a Stranglethorn Tiger, which we see come down, which is better. I mean, it really, it's giving him an opportunity now to at least play something on curve. Uh, but he's hes way far behind, and dropping down the Doom Guard will allow uh, so much board presence that you'd almost need sort of an Unleash the Hound and a combination with it to start dealing with this. And not only is Unleash the Hound more expensive, but the cards that combo is, uh, combos with are buffed as well at this point. Right, very true. It would be difficult for him to come back, uh, even with a nice comeback card like Unleash the Hounds. He actually isn't going to be able to play one of these Savannah High Mains. He just needs to stem the attacks with this Freezing Trap. He throws down the Hungry Crab as just a small body. It might be able to take out that, uh, that Direwolf Alpha, which yeah. will be really good for him. But he's held on to both these Savannah High Mains for so long and won't even get, it, get to play them out. Yeah. Uh, on turn six. Had he, if he was able to stabilize, these would be great cards, but as anyone who's played these matchups before, or just played against Zoo before, you know that you have to go hit for hit, tit for tat, to stay alive and to deal with the Zoo, unless you have an AoE spell that you can bring down to bear, which uh, this Hunter does not at the moment, or in its deck. Right, right. It, it's definitely a bad spot. If he had something like Explosive Trap, it certainly would have helped him out a little bit earlier. Uh, not as much as he would have hoped, because of course uh, the high health on that uh, Doom Guard, as well as the Nerubian Egg there, which yep. will spawn the four four. Um, and uh, our Zeus player is just looking amazing. He doesn't quite have lethal yet, but uh, being two damage off puts him in a pretty good spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I think you you play out the board here. You obviously keep the beak, keep the owl in hand. It's the MVP. It's the MVP of BlizzCon. It's 
going to be the MVP by uh, not being necessary to play here. So it'll be the, the inverse MVP. Um, mm -hmm. All right, we got to kill command, um, and that's going to seal the deal here. Oh, yeah, there's no way he clears everything on this board. Uh, yeah. Especially with the sticky nature of the Haunted Creeper and of the Nurbean Egg. And so that will be the first game to Lothar. And I've got to say, Varanis just had some awful, awful draws there. Uh, he got really unlucky there. And, uh, you know, it's it's the co the price you pay when you uh, take a deck like Hunter, which relies so heavily on getting a really good curve. You build around that by putting in some really strong early minions. But if you just get unlucky and get both these Savannah High Mains in your opening hand, then this is the cost. And... Uh, so he's just going to, of course, calculate every possible trade and every answer he could come up with, but there's not going to be a way to remove everything here. That's right. And we do have our first match going to Lothar of Planet Key Dynamics. And on that note, uh, we will be getting into the next game. Uh, there's about a one to two minutes. In fact, we are seeing the mage. Interesting well, okay. pick. So... Um, as we can see here, there is a mad scientist in here. So, uh, yes, this isn't a freeze mage. In fact, this is that secret uh, battle uh, death rattle minion, death rattle mage. You know, what? actually, those those cards all could be in a freeze mage. So the variant that uh, has, oh, oh, in you fact, you are this absolutely right. Yeah, you know, you this is the list right. that uh, Forsen uh, took to the Vi Game House Cup, um, and it's been kind of popular since then. Uh, you have a, a few more minions than, well, at, at least with the Mad Scientist, than you might have before. Uh, you also have things like Cone of Cold, which weren't necessarily around before Naxxramas. There was kind of a, a dead period right before Naxxramas where everyone started countering uh, Secrets or Freeze Mage, uh, especially with Hunter coming out on the ladder. And then all through Naxxramas, it was pretty low tier. And then it wasn't until, you know, this past month that people have figured out the new way to build it. And uh, I'm actually really interested to see how this works. You know, the Undertaker can be hard to deal with, but there's no Death Rattles in Lothar's hand, and he can't tap to play one either. So uh, this is a really slow start for Lothar, even though he has a bunch of, you know, cheap, cheap cards in his hand. None of them are really good plays. Right, and he does know there won't be a weapon involved, so it makes sense that the Ooze will come down and he will trade, because he doesn't want the... Uh, I mean, he effectively doesn't want the other minion to trade and get hero powered down, so... Yeah, and there's no Blingatron, so that, yeah, that, that <laughs> Citicon Swamp Beast won't be used. Not as of yet, not as of yet. <laughs> oh man, totally gonna change the meta, that card. I was talking to Firebat in D2 about this, and Firebat had something inter interesting to say. He said, anything you try to do to compare how a deck will change what's currently going on is probably useless because so many new cards, nothing now will matter in the future. This will be the past. The, once the new card sets come out, everything will be brand new. Everyone will be trying new things. They will, the, the decks of old will not matter. And we see full board clears here uh, from our players. Yeah, exactly. Uh, from what Trump's, like what Trump said, uh, you know, if the 40 cards or however many from Naxxramas could change up the meta so much, then the 120 cards from this expansion are going to be absolutely insane for the uh, upcoming set. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty pumped to see what it has to go. Right now, this game has been pretty slow. Lothar uh, not getting the absolute best curve here. He would like to have a few more minions on the board. And, uh, you, like we know, a slow game is very much going to go in the Freeze mage, Mage's favor. We do like, though, this uh, possibility, because he can abuse of Sergeant here, and then he has the ability to uh, uh, Defender, the new minion that comes out, the 4-4, four, four, as well as the abuse of Sergeant. Um, the only question is, um, yeah, I guess if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a spell that gets triggered, like a mere entity, it wouldn't be a problem. So it feels like uh, Defendering is a pretty solid move here. Um... And, and I like the position he's in. Not that uh, he's not going to get frozen down over the next few turns or maybe have a, a Doomsayer come down. Um, but, you know, we do not see in hand... Um, yeah, actually, we don't see an ability to freeze the entire board in uh, Varanus's hand at this point. Yeah, I, I agree. This is a really strong play. You, It kind of hurts to trade away the Nerbian Egg because it's usually insurance against, uh, you know, Blizzard or Flamestrike or Doomsayer. But... Uh, still being able to get that effectiveness out. What he's afraid of is committing too much to a board that uh, might get frozen and, you know, Frost Nova Doomsayered, because if Frost Nova Doomsayer came out, he knows that he wouldn't have an effective way to deal with it. He has a Doomguard in hand, but 
he wouldn't have that extra damage to kill it since uh, you know he doesn't want a power of only, and he might actually discard it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he he couldn't afford to trade, you know, potentially four cards for his board. Uh, the Doomsayer will come out just as uh, as a bit of health, and you know, if your opponent doesn't, oh, he's going to drop the Ice Lance as well. That's really smart. It's a, a bit of damage missed on the Warlock, but. You're not usually searching for damage since Warlock has no ways to heal themselves, and they're usually a little bit liberal with their own health when it comes to flame imps and life taps. So he uh, is very likely to be able to take out this Nerubian and deny any minions from being played this turn, uh, unless he wants to go for something like a Soulfire Doomguard, which I think would be a little too risky. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting the way he's playing it out. So what do you think is the, big, the game plan for both players from this point? Um, you know, Varanus is just doing his best to freeze it out. He doesn't have great cards in hand. He would love to have a lot more card draw, but he has Alex Straza and he has Archmage Adonitis. He has his light game there. He just needs to uh, draw into a few more ways to stay alive a little better. Um, like this Ice Barrier, he set up for a few turns, and it has not uh, been popped. The Acolyte of Pain is one of those cards that really helps you draw in to, uh, you know, your Ice Barriers, your Ice Blocks, your Frost Novas, your ways to stay alive, so that when you get to your 9 and 10 mana turns and you can do your huge Alex Straza plays, then uh, you're safe to do so without fear of dying to, you know, a Charge or a Soul Fire. Lothar has a full hand and nothing on the board. I mean, Varanus would be able to play out Clockwork Giant easily in this scenario. This is <laughs> a terrible spot for Zoo to be in, and he can only play two minions. He actually, uh, throws down the Night Juggler second because, of course, he doesn't want the 50% chance of giving an extra card to Varanus with a knife. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that Lothab, it, you know, it's a nice Lothab because it keeps him from playing the spells and he can't necessarily play out a minion, but being able to use a Zero Power and play the Loot Hoarder is still a decent way to use his mana, and uh, since he's not in danger of dying, not being able to use all of his mana isn't so bad for him. Um, what's really nice is that Lothar got this uh, this Lothar out of his hand before turn eight or nine because uh, we've we've seen a few times in Freeze Mage where someone will play Lothar up against a uh, Mage's turn nine and they'll just Alex draws it and not have to worry about Lothar for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, with twenty eight health there on Varanus with the. Uh, of course, effective health from the armor, and with a hand full of ways to stay alive and some pretty big late game power plays, I feel like he's in a really good spot here. Uh, unless Loth Lothar can just really keep up the minion pressure, there aren't any board freezes or board clears from uh, from Varanus. So maybe if he has a few more kind of dead draws, then he may have a hard time uh, being able to finish off Lothar with what he has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, God, you see, it's so rare to see. Uh... Uh, zoo with such a full hand and um, it feels like he's his it, nine cards I mean, <laughs> yeah it seems like the game plan's working for Varanus that's for sure Varanus is very happy about how things have gone this is a really atypical zoo game we yeah. haven't seen anything this slow uh, for a very long time um, Doomsayer's not a great draw here though and he doesn't have a great way to deal with either of these minions which are looking pretty big. He might even drop a fireball on uh, this Doom Guard if he had one, but uh, he might just want to play for the win in the next couple of turns. He throws out the Doomsayer here to get to buy him a potential seven health and protect his face uh, because at this point he knows he can win even without killing those two minions. Mm -hmm. So interesting. We're finally going to see the uh, the minions played out of Lothar's hand. And he goes down from 9 to 5. And hopefully a few more are coming out. Uh, this Nice Juggler and the Iron Beak Owl especially really going to uh, help deal with the minions there. But he has to keep in mind, what can Varanus play? Uh, what can those cards that he's been holding onto all game be? There's a really good chance that you know one of them is one of those late game cards like Alex Straza or Archmage Antonidas. And if he gets one of those going, then there's nothing Lothar can do to stop him. He's already played his Lothar. That's the only way you can answer those mage spells. Yeah. There's essentially just two ways to keep this mage from uh, killing you, and it's it's healing yourself or killing him first. And Lothar's unable to do the first, and he's done a pretty poor job at the second. 
Uh, Frost Nova here is a really, really nice way to stay alive. And even though you can't combo with the Doomsayer, it almost doesn't matter at this point just because it it's something that can buy an extra turn. He could Alex Straza Lothar's face right now. Um, he has an ice block up, so he knows that he can't die. Mm -hmm. And then he could do something like Archmage Frost Nova the turn after, but instead he's going to play it a bit safer. So he chooses to Frost Nova now. Um, he can't. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where, he'd, where he'd move from here. Playing it safe like that, well, you, you got to save those frost bolts with the ice lance for lethal, right? Oh, of of course he did. he's not going for Alexstrasza because Lothar is at seventeen health. I right. I haven't even been noticing Dizzy's health at this point. Um, at this point, what he's going to do is freeze, and then I think next turn he's going to Antonitis Frostbolt Ice Lance, yep. and then that gives you two fireballs, and you can easily finish him off with double fireball the turn after. Because um, he's got one. Um, his secret down is Ice Block, right? Ice Block, yes. Yeah, so is. he's got the second one in hand. He's guaranteeing himself a couple extra turns. If somehow it got popped, he could Archmage and Ice Block again, but uh, he wouldn't be doing that in this case because it's not going to be enough damage to push through to mm -hmm. pop And he would block. have he would have lethal, actually. With a Archmage Ice Block, then the turn after you have Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Hero Power, which is 14 damage exactly. You've also just drawn a Fireball, so you actually have <laughs> lethal uh, yeah. now. Wow. Oh. Such an interesting game, and very oh, well played just, from Varanus. He just missed lethal. Uh, oh, with Fireball Hero Fireball Power? Fireball is 6, Frostbolt is 9. Okay. Uh, Ice Lance is 13, and then Hero Power is 14. <laughs> but at that point, it didn't matter, since the Ice Block was going to keep him alive. We're getting to see them for the bands. Then uh, we actually, I don't think, are going to see too many very specific techs. Um, the only the only real counter cards that I, I would expect we'd see are some things like Harrison Jones or Black Knight. But in this case, uh, I feel like it should be a pretty standard Druid deck. Uh, he does have Lothab in his opening hand, which is going to be pretty key up against this Freeze Mage. Uh, but other than that, he's a pretty slow start. He'd love something like Wild Growth. Um, early on, that's pretty much the only card you can hope for. Uh, Shade of Naxxramas would be a second one. That'd be really good to get going now. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I'm, I'm taking a look at Lothar's deck as we have the Loot Order come down for Varanus. Uh, we've got the Double Shade, Double Force Savage combo. We do have the two Haunted Creepers. And this Druid is running a couple Loot Hoarders of its own. Okay, that the Loot Hoarder is something I haven't seen in too many of these Druid decks. And two and Powers uh, of the Wild. Okay, so this deck has gone from... It started out as Token Druid and then went to kind of an aggressive druid, and then went kind of ramp style when they brought in the wild groves. And now it's gone back to token. It's it's a living and breathing Kind of, but it's, but it's token without the, um, without the no uh, harvest teacher. golem. Well, no, there is, there are violet teachers, but there's no harvest oh. golem. So he's brought in the shades in place of the harvest golem. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah, I've got to say, this isn't something I've, I've seen very much of. Uh, typically, people have opted to go for more of the you know, Strife Pro Colento, and now Fire Bat deck list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think even though he, he didn't make it, yeah, he, he, he won the World Championship with it. <laughs> he deserves a little bit of credit. Uh, yeah. Keeping this this minion stealth here is very important because of the potential of a Frostbolt to take it out. Uh, that's something that Varanus might be itching to do since uh, it will get pretty big. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he can keep it stealthed for maybe another turn, even though it could die to Frostbolt Hero Power. Uh, I think that's the uh, amount of commitments that you're okay with the mage placing since it's essentially his entire turn is there any merit to letting it continue to grow even through blizzards and such and just get there, there and absolutely bigger? is um it could get to the point though that it just dies to doomsayer and then you haven't gotten in any damage with it and it just was a <laughs> a waste of turn three yeah um it was like turn three don't draw a card but mm -hmm. uh if he chooses to do it it, it be, might be a little greedy but could pay off for him and that's those are the decisions you have to make when you're playing at this level since every point of damage uh could be really really important i don't think he'd be too afraid though of a doomsayer now because he's got two keepers of the grove which is a direct counter um so i i like well he's gonna go push for damage which what's so nice is mm -hmm. the lotheb keeps it from getting frost bolted or uh fireballed mm -hmm. oh yeah no absolutely spell that can be played now uh the only spell he could play is zero mana and uh Mage doesn't actually have a zero mana spell. No. Nope. Wow. Okay, so 
he can push in for a significant amount of damage. We have 11 damage oh, yeah, on the can. board. And then we have a, a, an additional one with the hero power, but he can also bring down... I mean, I really... I guess he could force of nature here for six additional damage. I mean, the other option would be... I don't really think I would use either of the keepers. It would be Sylvanas. Um, yeah, you know, it's really interesting. It, it's kind of ridiculous to think about a force of nature coming down here, but when you play against Freeze Mage, you have to play differently than any other matchup. And here, it's so important to get him down the low health uh, yeah. before he can Alex himself back up or before he can kill you with ice blocks in play. And yeah. so that wouldn't be crazy. The other thing he could do is just uh, keep her for face damage just to get something else on the board. However, it would be very weak to a uh, flame strike coming up in the future. Yeah, the thing is, though, Keeper has so much use, and it's not like you're going to ever use Force of Nature for board clear. So I do really feel like it was Force or Sylvanas, and we have Lothar opting for Sylvanas. And I think he's going to find himself getting blizzarded, uh, getting, um, yeah, having a nice little blizzard come down on him. Yeah, yeah, blizzard is going to be a really great way to keep himself alive right now. He really would like to have a flame strike to follow it up, uh, because right now, after he blizzards... There's nothing else he can do, but he needs to stop the 16 damage on the board from coming in. Yeah. Um, this will, yeah. would actually be lethal if he if he, I, if he just did nothing. <laughs> he'd die. You know. But yeah. I, I feel like I feel like he'll, he'll probably do something. It's likely that he will play a card this turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Top level analysis complete. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna use his ability to freeze without Blizzard, which. I like this because next turn it will allow him to take out a significant number of these minions. He can, um, well, I guess he can't get rid of the little spiders off to the creeper, but he could get rid of the creeper itself. Um, yeah, hmm. Actually, I think his next turn is going to be a little clunky. I guess he's going to, oh, look at this. Ooh. Sylvanas is coming down for five, even though she won't be stealing anything, but that's just fine versus Freeze Mage. So I think the reason he silenced Sylvanas is because he knows Sylvanas could die to Blizzard. Mm -hmm. um, if he had if he had silenced Lothab and hit him in, he thinks that Lothab is still going to be able to get an attack regardless. Theoretically, so, yeah. yeah, this was the best way to ensure five damage in the long run. Yep. And we see the Frost Nova coming down. Uh, I believe that was an ice block. Or was it ice barrier? It was um, an ice barrier. it was an ice barrier. Yeah. That's correct. He had one ice barrier, one ice block in his hand, uh, and he has an ice block in play currently. And so, you know, he's safe on his on his hero, but he's just his hand is so so bad right now. He's had this Alexstrasza and this Archmage both games uh, for quite some time. The difference is that Zoo had a much slower start than this uh, Druid currently has. This Druid has pretty much had perfect draws every turn, and. Uh, He's been able to push in for so much damage. He, this would be such an insane Savage Roar if he could get these minions unfrozen, but he's not even going to need it. Once the mage runs out of freezes, he should be able to hit in for quite a bit. Yeah, and it's not even just a question of running out of freezes in his hand. This deck only has so much freeze in it, and I don't believe it has enough to freeze five turns in a row. I mean, that's just that's brutal. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's hurting him. Right now he can hero power the spider and then blizzard, and he feels pretty safe, uh, you know, for the next turn. But after that, what does he do? I guess uh, he, has he has the top deck flame strike. Yeah, he must have to. You know, normally it would be a great time to Alex draws it if your opponent had much less on his board. But with an eight six or eight five, and then the five one, and uh, you know all these minions around, it's it's going to be pretty bad. Now wait, didn't he hero power? The spider. Oh, were there there were two haunted creepers on the board. Yes. That's what happened. Okay. Yeah. Just trying to trying to think where those spiders come in from. <laughs> Sneaky little spiders. Um, it, Varanus has been able to stay alive for now. He he's up at twenty two health. He's not dead yet. It's just it's still not looking great for him. He's not in a position he'd love to be since his next few turns aren't obvious. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the druids at. Um, 32 health, 33 health uh, after that hero power and oh my goodness, yeah, I mean you need usually at least to buy yourself two turns to play the Alexstrasza into Fireball or uh, Pyro combos and it doesn't look like he's going to get that but uh, things could potentially turn around for Varanus there are ways he could but with a Fireball coming into his hand, that's not one of them 
Mm -hmm. Another important thing to note is actually the armor that's, that Druid has built up. Now when Alex Straza comes down, he'll actually be at 19 health, mm -hmm. which is much more difficult to deal with. And so even though there is an Alex Straza facing him right now, uh, he's Ooh. at 19, he's not necessarily dead, and he just drew a Savage Roar. So yeah. there's pretty much no way that this Ice Block isn't getting popped this turn. Um, I expect what he's going to do is try to do the math, and it won't be that hard since he has a 9 attack. Uh, Shade of Naxxiramis. He wants mm -hmm. to pop the Ice Block and kill this Alex Straza, yep. so that Alex Straza can't swing into his face for 8. Certainly, and it seems very doable here. Um, in fact, yeah, I mean, pretty much any combination of your minions will do it. Um, I think the, the Shade goes into face. Maybe your 5-1 with the Savage Roar um, goes into Alex Straza. Everything else goes face. But you do want to get him down to just as low as possible, so the order of attacking is important on the on the mage of face. Right, right. I, he actually chooses not to go for the savage roar here. Uh, I don't know what he's going to use the savage roar for in the future, and yeah. I don't actually know. There's a way to kill, to pop this, the face. Oh, oh, right. If if he swipes face, if he, if he does either, he should be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's going to be able to do both. Sometimes I like to keep swipe because just having the guaranteed 4 damage to face is a really nice way to finish off an opponent who's frozen wow. you. Um, and I don't know that that was the optimal uh, distribution of you know minions and damage, <laughs> but he, he got it done. Yeah, he did get it done. He didn't uh, miss anything from the rope, which would have actually been the biggest issue had that happened. He could potentially lose a game by roping and not getting in all the hits, not popping the block, not killing the Alex Straza. Flame Strike is drawn, which is quite nice. Uh, a couple turns late, but looks like Antonitis is coming down, and an Ice Block, which is the only way to potentially survive because he needs the Ice Block. So he can now next turn do t 13 damage uh, plus Antonitis. Um, so he yeah, Lothar is going to just be able to kill Antonitis here, yeah. and I think that uh, Rag would be a really nice play as well. Uh, what's so cool about Rag is even if it's frozen, it's still going to hit for 8. So it's uh, one of Freeze Mage's worst enemies. Yeah. Unnecessary, and, but nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, you know, because if he at this point gets frozen and, you know, maybe his opponent plays Leroy and he can't play anything on his board, and, <laughs> you know, if he, can't, if he can't kill him with uh, Force of Nature, then he could always rely on Rag. Yeah, absolutely. And we we're um, in a. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, at, at this point, you know, when there might be a couple of misplays coming in with the map, uh, what Sixo said after the last game is pretty key. Uh, you don't miss lethal, you just spot BM. <laughs> and uh, that's, you know, Lothar, Lothar, Lothar's just taking his sweet time. He's uh, being pretty comfortable. He's probably just kicking back, you know, having a chat with his wife, telling her about this uh, game of Hearthstone he just won. Because. Uh, you know, it's it's looking pretty good for him right now. If he could play all the spells in his hand, he could kill his opponent. But unfortunately, there are uh, some pretty strict mental limitations. Yeah, there absolutely are. And while he is probably going to take this game, um, most important thing to note, though, is that he's got a couple more games he needs to win. Absolutely. Uh, well, maybe just one. Maybe just one. I mean, I mean, for the night, he's got other games, too. Right, right, right. If he does take the uh, series, of course, he does have the best of seven afterward against Powder. But, uh, hey, Varanus has a chance to counter the kill Varanus before he can get out some maybe large taunt minions. Druid of the Claw is a really nice way to uh, soak up some of that damage and get something on the board. And uh, Both players playing uh, Rag, though. Ooh. Interesting. Fun to see some rag battles. Wild growth in the starting hand is perfect. Mm -hmm. You can even keep the spectral knight because it would just be a turn four spectral knight, and a turn four keep uh, is definitely nothing too bad. Now he has a pretty nice curve. If there's anything he needs to silence, like a haunted creeper, maybe, or even a loot hoarder, he has the chance to do that on turn three with this current curve. And he has a sense of this deck. He has a. He kind of has a. He knows that this is um, the kind of deck that will be running the the loot hoarders, and and that's a nice thing to be able to do early preventing that early card draw and dealing with the minion immediately with the hero power afterwards. Huh, that's... A yeah. coin power of the wild is not what I was expecting there, and it's actually going to be really, really weak up against this uh, Keeper of the Grove that he knows in the hand. That's going to be a, a really easy way to deal two damage to this minion, to keep it out, and make him 
spend a card and a half on three damage to the face. That was a yeah. really, really expensive Sinister Strike. And the other thing is that I think that that's signaling that Lothar feels he needs to push early for damage in order to win this game. I think of that's course. what that's a sign of. Uh, not mm -hmm. desperation, but knowing that he, if he doesn't get something going very quickly, he could just lose immediately. Right, right. His his variant uh, could be weak in the mirror, uh, especially if some of those cards are cut. And we see some really, really strong mid-game creatures like Chillwind Yeti uh, and the Spectral Knight, of course, that uh, Varanus is going to be really happy to have here. With a Violet Teacher in his hand, I don't know that he's going to be quite so happy about... Ooh, uh, pulls an Innervate off of... Okay. Uh, of that minion, he could theoretically innovate out hero power, which would allow him to kill the spectral light. But bringing down the uh, violet teacher as it is is going to be the play. Yeah, it wouldn't be much better than a wisp uh, in that scenario. And the other thing is, he wants to hold on to the uh, shade of Nexramus. Um, yeah. Right now, Varanus is in a pretty good spot. He has some high health minions on the board. His curve has been fantastic. Next turn, he could do shade yeti, and the turn after, he has a Ragnaros to. Uh, to back it up. And we see two uh, Ancients of Lore here clogging up Lothar's hand. He can play one of them this turn, but that's not really going to deal with the board. Right. I think he has to play it just because his hand is pretty garbage otherwise. Uh, he does have the potential to clear with Force of Nature the, on turn six, which may be what he has to do. Or um, Blood Hoarder Hero Power and take okay. four, which is looking like what he's going to choose to do. A bit and more value play. It deals with the board of hand, but it mm -hmm. doesn't given that 5-5 five, five and 2 cards in hand that the maybe more proactive play might have. It's so interesting that Lothar wanted to take control and he completely had that uh, turned on his head. Varan is taking control, now Lothar is fighting for board presence, and while he's gained some, it does feel like he's behind, at least to me. Yeah, yeah, he definitely isn't in the best spot. He's he's done an alright job of, clearing with this, of dealing with this board, but... Uh, with the plays that we know Varanus has coming out in the next few turns, I think that uh, he's going to be pretty happy. Instead of going for something like Yeti Shade, he chooses to do Force of Nature for the removal. Uh, it's a really nice way to deal with the Shade of Naxxramas, which I think was the biggest thing he was worried about uh, from that board was. Yeah. Alright, turn 6. So now that he played out that turn 5 that way, Innervate kind of isn't even a great play here because it doesn't really... Uh, Effect, efficiently use a mana bringing down an Ancient of Lore and he's one turn away from being able to bring it out on curve such a tricky spot for Lothar I'm curious to see how he plays this out I feel like he's thinking Force of Nature because it will deal with the Yeti and it is on curve uh, and he's got an additional Force of Nature in his hand so I feel like he's thinking Force of Nature but it's not what you want to do a Force of Nature for a Yeti never feels good Oh yeah, it is a pretty tragic play for card value, for mana value. Uh, you're really relying on that combo to finish off your opponent, and when you have to burn it in that case, and now you've got a Ragnaros, and you have no way to deal with it. No, no oh, way whatsoever what on a uh, naked board. I think you have to combo. You have to go Force of Nature, Innervate, Savage Roar. Use two of them for this, uh, for this rag. Yeah. I mean, oh, this is oh. just... Playing out perfectly for Varanus. Lothar's not out of the game, but using uh, three of his four combo elements in a token deck is uh, is crushing. It's crushing. Right. Yeah. It's it's not uh, not too great for him. He has ways to refill his hand. But I think they're just going to be a little too slow. And you know that your opponent has elements of the combo as well. Even though you've already seen the force of nature, just this savage drawer is actually going to win him the game. Uh, Lothar has to heal with this. And even with that heal, uh, Savage Roar is 6. We have 9 on the board. That's 15. And uh, 16, Varanus is yeah. going to take it. He's got it. But, yeah, the hero power gives him 16. Yep. That is it. Varanus evens it up. It's 2 and 2. And now we're going to see Lothar down on his road. Absolutely. And um, Varanus showing that he is game. He is ready to play. And he's not going down without a fight. We're going to get our full best of 5 series here. And let's take a quick look. Take a quick look at that last deck. Uh, as we know, it will be the rogue. Pretty awful draws. Yeah. Um, there were. I feel like maybe a couple of mistakes with how Lothar played the last game. I think that coining out the power of the wild in turn one was a little bit too uh, optimistic of him, thinking that he might be able to swing through with it a couple of times. The fact that he only got it off once, and that that wild growth was in Varanus' starting hand, which we see it is again, 
is really going to give him a key advantage. He uh, can play two Spectral Knights, and Spectral Knight is one of the best cards up against Rogue, since they rely so heavily on cards like Sap, Backstab, and Eviscerate to deal with enemy minions. God, yeah. And it looks like he's thinking about coining out that big game Hunter, since he knows that the only thing that will be useful against would be a Van Cleef. Um, but chooses not to, and we have the Rogue um, Hero Power and Weapon Up and Pass. And now we're going to see that turn to Wild Growth which is a uh, very simple straightforward it's always what you're looking for mm -hmm. yeah he, he i think he was thinking about the the big game hunter you know i actually don't know what he's thinking because he's gonna have four mana next turn uh but drawing the shade next turn this definitely puts that in the back if he has three mana to spend he's definitely gonna go for the shade and he can say that maybe lothar is gonna get greedy go for a big uh, edwin the issue with that is druid has three really strong cards uh, of course the two keepers and that uh, edwin van cleef as well all right, they, sorry, the big game hunter. Mm -hmm. Shade coming down here for the rogue, which is nice. And uh, okay, so spectral knight. Um, that's really going to put a a significant amount of pressure on Lothar. And while he can clear it, uh, it's going to take a lot. I yeah, he'd have to use his cold blood in some way. And if you use your cold blood just to trade up onto a minion, then. Mm -hmm how are you going to finish off your opponent? Because that's a really, really big part of the rogue's damage in this deck. Uh, you really rely on swinging through for a 4 damage cold blood, maybe even concealing it so you can do it again. Because this deck can very easily run out of damage, whereas Druid's really just looking to keep minions on the board and the minions are going to do the damage for it. And Druid minions are a lot easier to keep out. Yeah, I mean, as you say, like you know, even if he had a spell that could target it, which he doesn't, uh, it would be difficult to combo it, but he doesn't have anything. He, If he plays the SI first to get the cold-blooded uh, buff, then the SI doesn't do the two damage, and then he still has to attack with his face. If he plays the cold blood on the minion, and then SIs, then the SI does do the extra damage, but the cold blood is effectively wasted on the shade because he didn't need the extra damage. So he's going to play the naked SI, he will then cold blood, so he loses the minion and the cold blood, does get the trade, and doesn't have to attack with face. So that was the best of a horrible situation. Mm -hmm. That that's definitely a an excellent way to uh, to describe Lothar's current position. We've seen these games just give some really really bad draws, and uh, that's what Lothar's sitting on. He doesn't have anything he can play with Gadgetzan. A lot of times, you know, you might have the coin from earlier, or you might have a uh, a preparation that you can play out with this gadget sand but he can't afford to do that azure drake though or drake a into a deadly poison point. really what he needed here to get something going so true now he has you know something he can combo with the gadget and auctioneer if he draws something like a prep then that can really get him back in this game because that's what he needs is to get the draw mechanic from the gadget sand going yeah well i feel like a swipe's coming down yep here it is it just makes good sense hero power to the face and then um I guess he doesn't attack with the shade. So I guess yeah, he's thinking Yeah, I think 3 health is a little too vulnerable. You want to wait till it's about 5 minimum versus rogue? Probably. Yeah, you want him to invest a bit. Uh, 3 is just too easy to take out with Deathly Poison. I even think 4 uh, is too easy to take out with uh, Eviscerate. Eviscerate. Yeah. And so he might be holding on to this for a while, especially since he has some really good turns. He doesn't need to rely on this uh, Shade yeah. and Axtra Amistil damage for him, since he has a... Uh, a rag in his hand for turn 8, and of course the Ancient of Lore for turn 7. Edwin comes down, though, and it's a 6-6, six, six, and that's going to be pretty tricky to deal with. He can't big game Hunter it, which is I really love, what he wants. I love how Edwin is never uh, is rarely built out to be a gigantic minion, but just more of a tempo play with a couple combos. It's such a, a, a great card for the Rogue. Oh, yeah, it absolutely is. And, you know, a couple times we've seen players uh, go big with Edwin, uh, mm -hmm. like Savitz uh, over at the C Story Cup, where it mm -hmm. really paid off for him. In this case, however, if Lothar had just played one additional card, then his dreams would have been crushed by that big game hunter. Yeah. And so now as uh, Varanus, you're, you, know, you know that this is a game you need to take. This will allow you to win the entire series. It's all on the line here. It looks like he's going to play it uh, aggressively. I was going to say safe, but no. He brings a Druid of the Claw down in cat form, and um, while he uses the hero power to clear the Blood Mage, it looks like he's going to go all face and he still saves the shade. 
you know, Rogue doesn't have any good way to deal with the sh stealth shade. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some classes that can take it out, and that's why it's tricky to leave it stealth like this. Mm -hmm. But since your health isn't in dangerous position and you don't need to clear everything on the board, uh, you can afford to leave it down for a couple more turns and uh, kind of make the Rogue sweat a little bit. Yeah, backstab's a perfect card to draw into. And a sap. Okay, mm -hmm. so... Well... He's gonna I think you just attack it with face and then swing in with Edwin. I, I, I would say Shiv face as well. Yeah, Shiv face. I was going to say, you really want to play out uh, either the Shiv, and since the sap really doesn't make sense here, I don't believe. Although oh, yeah. I could sap the 4-2, I just don't like it. Yeah, I think Shiv face for the extra card draw. Maybe mm -hmm. he gets into a prep. That would be fantastic. Prep Thana knives. Shade. So, okay, so it looks like he's going to... Alright, and the second card was a rag. So he's going to use a 6-6 six, six Van Cleef instead of taking any damage on his face, which um, I think is a smart play in the long run. While Van Cleef is easier to clear, I think the Rogue's feeling um, like he could get killed in the next two or three turns if he's not protecting his life a little more carefully, so I think I like that play. He also would have lost to to Force of Nature Innervate Savage Roar if he would have attacked him with face. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's Maybe not the three-card combo that he was playing around, mm -hmm. but overall, he is just playing around the potential of that combo the next few turns. And it's pretty tricky if you don't worry about your health until you're in that range. Uh, so instead, you have to plan ahead and look forward. Preparation is perfect. Having that second gadget Zen here is amazing. And now Fan of Knives is going to draw him two cards, as well as yeah. being played for free. So he still has three more mana. And he, he gets a full get... blood. Ooh. Oh, and he gets a deadly poison. So he can sap, but you don't really think you want to. So the question is... You're probably going to goose your hero power. Do you then just um, re-weapon up and drop your deadly poison and your cold blood? I think the other option is just attack that and then SI7 face just to get a minion out or shade and extremis. Either okay. one of them are pretty good. I was favoring uh, weapon in the deadly poison just to get an additional card because he's out of he's out of gadget zands. He's out of the ability to draw. That's true. If if there is a way to remove the gadget zand, then uh, you know he didn't get too many cards from it. Um, now Ragnaros gonna do play okay. out Yolo style and removes the stealth minion. Not the wow. best target, but better than face. And a backstab. So now he's gonna really get anything he needs. This is turning around for Lothar. Yeah, he's gonna backstab it. I think he might sap it uh, mm -hmm. after he, you know, gets that backstab out of his hand. Um, he could even play. Oh no, he couldn't play his own rag after that. It would no. be a little bit too much mana. I mean, he could he could cold blood. Then if he gets a prep, he could then sap into uh, a a a rag, but I think you just really want to sap here. Mm -hmm. He might actually come up with his own rag and hope for the 50-50 to take out the enemy rag. Hmm. Um, that would be the most risky play, but also the most... Uh, ooh. If he takes his 8 to the face, he can remove the rag right here now. He could SI into Eviscerate. Oh, he's going to Blade Flurry Eviscerate. That's I think even better. I think mm -hmm. that's even better. Yeah, I mean, S SI of rate would have been a really great way as well. Uh, he also could have hit it with his face. There were a lot of ways to get rid of this rag. <laughs> like, he could this, he could that. He could, yeah. He, I like that uh, he came up. That was a nice one. Yeah, the, the issue with uh, with sapping it is if he just plays down the next turn, and there's a 50-50 it takes out your gadget Zan, that has cold blood on it, that's a huge amount of your damage. That was your last cold blood as well, and uh, that's your last way to, to draw. However, well, we didn't quite uh, think about that, you know, mm -hmm. seven seven or more attack that was on that gadget sam yeah we were busy uh sorting out some of the many options lothar had and while he now has a conceal um i, I guess he could conceal rag but i don't know if that really makes a lot of sense i like the lothar si um and then um i get i really don't want to sap that ancient of lore so i feel like it's going to be hero power uh, are you really going to sap this See the issue is if your opponent just draws too much card, too two more cards, you're not that worried. I don't know. I guess I guess this also does deny the potential healing mechanic since he right. does need to finish off his opponent with basically what he's going to have in the next couple turns. And it, yeah, and this prevents a four savage combo on this turn, so um, that five mana innervate ain't getting used. We do see the spectral knight coming down, hero power to the face, and an additional five from the lore. Um, it's actually getting close here. We have ourselves a game, and I think we're in a race right now. Oh, yeah. 
That's absolutely true. Uh, right now, with Force of Nature and the minions on board, he could deal, what's that, 15 damage? Which mm -hmm. is the exact amount of health that Lothar has. Uh, with hero power as well, it would be 16. And so he definitely needs to clear here, or at least sap. Now, he can't sap the Spectral Knight, but he could potentially go for the Ancient of Lore. Uh, trading is going to be difficult here, because sending in your Lothab into that Ancient of Lore is 5 damage that you won't get back. He might want to sap Ancient of Lore, send both of his minions into the Spectral Knight. And that takes care of what's on the board and allows him to maybe get down to Violet Teacher uh, before the sap and conceal everything after for a pretty safe board. Yeah. God. Interesting. I'm trying to think about what would be the... the... There's also Yola Rack. Yeah, I was going to say it, there's Yola Rack. It has a lot rag. of good targets. Uh, well, it has two good targets. One well, I mean, target. he could Yola Rag Sap, the Ancient of Lore in this case, because he's a little more desperate now. Sap with the Rag would allow you to... That's uh, true. Or it doesn't actually, keep you alive to the combo, but you, if just one piece of the combo exists... I like Yola no. Rag trade your 5-5 five, five into his 5-5, five, five, but okay, he's going to Sap. He's going to go for... for uh, the rag on the face here. Ooh, and he does clear the Spectral Knight. Yeah. So it will hit face, but it also keeps him alive to actually everything other than force, innervate, savage roar, hero power. And if you draw savage roar here, that's exactly what he's going to be able to do. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. No, nope, Druid of the Claw. Bummer. I think he has to uh, force of nature here to take out that Lothab. Um... How how does he how does he deal with rag in this situation? Yeah, is the Lothab what you're worried about? I'm more worried about the rag. Oh well, my god. That's the thing. I if you if you drew it of the claw, innervate force of nature, you can't remove both minions. Correct. Yeah. And I think that's gotta be the play here. Because you can't take any damage to your face. You can't take the five, you certainly can't take the eight. And uh that innervate's gonna give him the exact uh one of the exact two amount or two, but he only he needs one oh god, I can't even get it out. <laughs> He needs that additional mana. It'll give him that what he needs to kill that rag. Here, I'll put I'll put a Maza's one plus one equals two into the go. chat, and it'll all be okay. Thank you. Two plus one equals three. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about here. Um, as I stumble and over my words, we have the Violet Teacher and an Eviscerate coming down, and then I'm guessing we're going to see a conceal because there's not much else you're going to want to conceal, and that'll allow you an additional minion on the board. Yeah, it also keeps them alive, which is uh, really, really important right now to be able to swing in with them. Uh, you've got your 5 damage on the board. You've got your 1 damage from the knife as well. You're 1 off of lethal. However, Varanis uh, might be able to heal up or at least get the extra armor with uh, with his hero power. Yes, and thank you for appeasing the chat gods. Oh, um, I gotcha. Innervate. Okay, so we're going to see what he draws here from that um wild growth he gets a swipe Ooh. so okay we're gonna heal up which i like innervate sw uh innervate hero power he, he innervate yeah. swipe would have been one mana off one mana off, um, yeah. but this gains him the extra armor and puts him just a little bit closer to killing his enemy since there's no card you can draw that would enable the uh innervate since you've already used both ancient of lores then you might as well just get it out now I had the sap like on the sap of the ancient of the lore on the board. It's so painful. He's Ooh. gonna do it. He's gonna do it. It does give him two one ones, which is it nice, does. but it, it also gives your opponent five more health. Yeah. I think it might be enough. I think the two extra one ones. No, it's not gonna be enough because the Well actually you can't do the both the, gonna... Yeah, the swipe's gonna be nice, but you can't do the Ancient of the Lore and the Swipe. So it will delay him I think enough. He only needs to draw. Uh, um, Lothar only needs to draw a few extra points of damage after uh, s swiping here. Yeah, if he swipes in hero powers, then he'll be up to eight health, and his opponent has seven damage. And so, well, he needs to hit one of those violet teachers to clear it. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. So he will be down to five health. And yeah. His opponent will have four damage, and his opponent will have yeah, four one violet damage. teacher and his knife. Yep. Four damage. He needs anything that does damage. Man, Varan is in such a tricky spot. What? It's gonna be a prep. What's that? It's gonna be a prep. A prep. He still uh, got one left in his deck. He, yeah. he used one for his fan of knives, but he, he still has a second, and it's one of the. Is is that is that one card left? Uh might be more. I feel like two. I feel like that's two cards left, but okay. we'd have to mouse over to see. Oh man. I can't wait for spectator mode. 
less than a month that'll... away, man. Less so than luxurious. A month away. Man, that is going to change the dynamic of these broadcasts. We've we've been doing it pretty good, but uh, I think we're going to be able to do it even better. Sorry. Um, I'm... Okay, so healing himself up now. Uh, not going to remove all the minions, but it actually does give him one more health than if he were to swipe. Because uh, those minions he could kill would only be removing four damage, and he gained five health. Then this is the preparation. Boom. Nailed it. Wow. That is not the card wow. you wanted to see. That is definitely not the card you wanted to see. And yeah. uh, Druid's still got quite a few draws left. I actually think that Varanus can take this. He just needs to stay alive. He's got the swipe to do it. Um, yeah. And now with this minion and with your swipe and hero power, you can clear the entire board. Uh, however, it does depend on uh, how Lothar decides to play this turn. If he just goes all face... Or if he decides to send in, if he sends in the one ones, uh, like two one ones and a violent teacher to clear this ancient of lore, that's probably going to be his best bet. But he doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know there's a swipe. Sorry, I'm just setting because uh, the players are on a different. Um, the players are on a different uh, time than us. They're a little delayed. I'm, I'm sending out their bands for the next match while we're still doing this match, which is of course I tricky. will. Uh, I will, I will build the suspense as we get into the last few turns of the first best of five of the Yacht Hearth U Invitational. Thank he is so swinging much. in to face with everything, bringing his opponent down to two health. And it will be one. Oh, no, he's already attacked with his, oh. with his knife. Oh, and then he got daggered up. Okay, so there yep. was an extra point of health there and somewhere. <laughs> he preps for one minion. He, uh, he does gain the one minion with the preparation. However, it's just another minion that's going to die to swipe and uh, keeper of the great wait yeah keeper of the grove can do the can do the one damage or the two damage the, two damage. the one health and hero power. he wins now druid hero power is exclusively better than rogues in the comp tech war yeah he um he's out of eviscerates right wait oh he's out of cards lethal way. if you would have hit face I mean, huh, wait, did really? he? Or did he I don't not? Know. I don't think he did. Oh, maybe he did. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Lothar but goes down a incredibly, incredibly close game, but Varanus takes the best of five. And in just five minutes, we're going to have a best of seven between Varanus and... He had difficult times against that one class. However, he did priority Bennett. So I guess that can't necessarily be uh, our main his main concern yeah. uh, with that warrior. It is a strong deck, however. Um, it's... Uh, Typically swings a little bit more, you know, this druid deck might have 50-50 against everything, yeah. uh, but warrior, uh, you know, is generally more of a 60-40 deck, uh, just depending it's on the matchup. It's an equal opportunity swinger. <laughs> 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 All right, we do, see, uh, we do see the warlock versus the warlock, and uh, it is a zoo versus a handlock. Yes, in fact it is. Yep, yep, unless, unless zoos are picked up the sun for your protector. Yeah. Um, oh man, getting Hellfire and Molten Giant is outstanding up against the zoo. His, yeah. his hand is overall pretty slow, but Molten Giant is pretty necessary for uh, throwing out with the taunt once you drop down to, uh, you know, maybe around 15 or lower. And uh, Hellfire is such an excellent way to clear the board. It doesn't take out those four health minions like Dark Iron Dwarf or Nerubian, but it can clear so much of uh, what Varanus is going to be throwing down. Yeah, it certainly can. This uh, Flame Imp turn one, you know, it looks like a really strong turn from Varanus, uh, and with the Flame Imp coin uh, Voidwalker, which is what I expect we'll see, then uh, he's going to he's going to have a really strong board. However, it is vulnerable, of course, to the Hellfire. He actually decides to pass the turn instead of coining out the Voidwalker, which is uh, a bit interesting. I suppose he wants to save his coin maybe for a Harvest Golem, which is a little bit more uh, sticky. Yeah, it, it's it's more durable to something like Ooh, the or a very lucky draw into a juggler just to get some a uh, little extra value on it and now protect it. Um, I I don't. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered either way. It's just one additional point of damage which would have been uh, given by the uh, the Void Walker anyway. I think he was doing it for what you thought for the for the Harvest Golem. Yeah, yeah. In the end, it ends up being the exact same damage. 
Um, he can, he's gonna play Harvest Golem or Haunted Creeper, probably Harvest Golem uh, this turn. We know that the, his best play is actually the Void Terror. Um, both these two held, or really any of the minions, uh, to survive this Hellfire, but we will see Hellfire come out and only a 2-1 will remain. Yeah, and we, and he's this index. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, the deck's completely cleared. He's gonna have very uh, one one mana or zero mana molten giants after he taps, and he's got the ability to. Um, nope, he does not have the ability to taunt up his giants yet. I was going to say he does, but he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't have any taunt givers in his hand. He mulliganed his son for your protector, but he does have a sludge belcher, which will keep him alive. So he can play down the molten and the sludge belcher. He can. Wow, this this is getting close. Like. What does he draw here? Leper Gnome. Okay, he needs to tap, I think. Yeah, Leper Gnome is really good, though. That yes. two additional damage could mean the world, especially since you can trigger it yourself with your uh, Void Terror, mm -hmm. if you need to. Um, he doesn't have a on board, which I feel very confident saying. And I feel like you probably just throw down the, uh, the Leper Gnome. Yeah, you don't want to kill anything with this Void Terror. I mean, you could maybe get rid of the one once, but effectively it's not going to do much because the 8 eight's going to wipe it out if he has any way of clearing that taunt. So I like the Leper Gnome coming down here. Yeah, it, it, you know, putting it out now does enable it to be silenced, which is actually what we're going to see. Um, but yeah. you're usually not too worried about silence there. However, drawing the Earthening Farseer enables him to play the two mana than three mana, fill out his curve pretty well, and actually deal with this board. You know, he's up to 10 health, and he has a giant on the field. It's not in as bad of a spot as he could be. Power overwhelming, Ooh, man. that's nice. He's like just, just four mana off. He's like a soul fire off. Dire Wolf, that's two of it. Oh my goodness, he's just, he's getting in there little by little. And unless uh, Varan, excuse me, unless Powder gets a Taunt Giver, you're going to see game. Well, actually, well, he can clear this whole board. Yeah, yeah, he can't. That, that's and that's really important here. The fact that he, he oh, oh, and he gets Defender of Argus. Wow. I think here you. Uh, like you, you can. Uh, s you're you're going to lose your your owl here either way. Um, yep. So you send owl into uh, wolf. You send farseer into the spider. Um, you can taunt up both of them, or you can play your uh, your big game hunter and then taunt that up. I think uh, I like playing the big game hunter and taunting those up. You're not you have nothing to play big game hunter on. I mean the void terror could be, but you oh wait no you can't it. play big game hunter because your uh, your giant is a target. Oh. He's going to try he's and he's going to realize. Yeah, yeah, you can't play it yeah. out. With we the, can see it. We can see on the alternate stream we're watching that he tried to play it out. Um, and so he's going to have to just play the big game on the Earth and Ring, and that's okay. A uh, Soul Fire ends it here. So um, basically, it feels like uh, Varanus is gonna uh, double uh, tap once and, and draw a card and see if he can luckily get into a Soul wow. Fire. Wow! This draw wins the game. Let's see if he gets the Skill Fire. Nope. No Skill Fire. Oh. And will he tap? Or will he play naked minions and die? He taps. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. abusive sergeant. That's not gonna do it. Oh man, that was an exceptional recovery from Powder, and that's the power of Handlock. If you don't kill him, he uh, he still has the potential to win. Yeah. So um, the best comeback deck, or the class, or I mean, yeah, it was class. so close. He he literally had nothing. He needed exact one of three cards maybe four taunt givers and he got them and uh gets an award as well up against i hearth use powder and i heart you think it's going to be a fantastic uh set of games yep yep i i definitely agree with you uh you know one interesting note is that varanus could have switched to a value mage or any variant of mage since mm -hmm. he doesn't have to play the same decks However, he does stick with what looks like the same list. Yeah. Acolyte oh man, King Mountain there. Giant's starting hand is absolutely wonderful. He's got some early minions too. Uh, Iron Beak Owl is super important in this matchup to take out the Doomsayer, mm -hmm. so its effect doesn't go off and kill your Giants. And potentially also, if that doesn't happen and you have a Giant that could get in for 8 damage and he freezes it, you can always uh, unfreeze your Giant. But certainly absolutely. saving it for a Doomsayer is, is very important as well. Yeah, the, it's it's a very strong card in this matchup. One of your best ones besides your giants. 
Uh, Scythe and Soul is also, you know, you basically got two targets for it. You've got Doomsayer mm. and you've got Alexstrasza. Varanus uh, coins into Arcane Intellect getting Ar uh, Archmage and Tinnitus, which is a little bit late gamey, but then a Mad Scientist, which is nice. And we see a second Owl and a Hellfire. Really good cards. And now we see a shield block and yeah, I think the um, Acolytes coming down. And we're going to let the pain, the pain speak to him because uh, at this point he needs to continue to draw cards and now he's going to have to find a way to deal with this giant. I can just imagine Acolyte saying, let the pain speak to me, and then facing up against the mountain giant, wetting himself <laughs> a little bit. You know, I can't say he'd be too happy about that amount of pain. No. I think he was definitely hoping for, you know, just a little bit of tickling, which yep. he's going to get with the uh, uh -huh. Fire Blast. It's really nice to draw two guaranteed cards from this. Interesting play on the Doomsayer here. So I think he's thinking he's going to save himself eight damage by yep. forcing it to jump in, but little does he know that one of two owls is going to come down allowing for some serious uh, damage. Yeah, the, yeah, the plan was just heal yourself for seven with this Doomsayer, um, but you don't actually need to kill it. Uh, unfortunately, he can't play his Mount Giant and Silence, but he just swung in for eight. And now how does Mage deal with this? And he has freezes, which are going to be absolutely crucial here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a... Uh... Kona Cold? Kona Cold, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks like Kona Cold's his best option here. You can also Ice Lance the Giant, uh, send in your Acolytes to the Owl, and then Doomsayer. Although you can't send in the Acolyte right now, because you will overdraw. Wow. Okay, so he actually just leaves it out for now, because he does have Kona Cold Doomsayer on a future turn. Uh, he will overdraw by one, though. Rest in peace, Carve. Or... Oh, no, 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 no. He no, has he's nine. Good. He's nine. He's, yeah, nine. he's good. Dang I was it, just counting is so hard. Triple checking it. Uh, Clockwork giant, giant would be so amazing. And Sapper. Nine plus Two one cars. does not equal 11. Amaz math. Oh, gosh darn it. But okay. Sapper, Sapper and Clockwork Giant would be so strong right now. Oh, Clockwork, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Goblin Clockwork Giant, Giant, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Goblins and gnomes, please. The end is coming. And the end Ooh. is coming. Except um, not as quickly as he thinks. <laughs> These two doomsayers are gonna have to watch the end of the world, and it's not gonna be the end they're hoping for. Right? Yeah, it's it's really the end of Rannis's world. I mean, he he has ways to stay alive, but he doesn't have ways to actually finish off these giants. However, if he can keep up the freezes for long enough, then these giants may not matter. You know, Blizzard into maybe getting a flame strike would be absolutely uh, stupendous. Yeah. Do you heal up one of your giants to pull them out of blizzard range? Out of blizzard flame strike range? Probably not. I, I, I think generally you want to save it for post Alexstrasza. But you know, it wouldn't be out of the question to try and keep your giants alive, since you know at this point they're not ever going to die to a doomsayer. So the health is actually really important. Mm -hmm. um, since your opponent can only kill them with direct damage. Oh, I like Siphon Soul. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. The only other Siphon Soul target is going to be Alex Straza, yeah. uh, or potentially Archmage Antonitis, mm -hmm. neither of which will be out for a couple of turns. Yeah. And I like this because it allows him to save his last silence for one of his minions when he needs to sneak attack for an additional mm -hmm. 8 damage. Very true. That's definitely a possibility. He, If he did it now, we know it would be a mistake because of the uh, potential for Blizzard to just refreeze it again and right. kill that uh, owl. Right. Um, he's taking a long time to think here. I think that... Uh, okay. He does end up going with the Owl, so he's going to save the Siphon Soul for a bigger threat, or a minion that's harder to clear. Okay, he invests pretty heavily into this board. Um, it will be frozen here for, by uh, Fire Blizzard, though. And, uh, you know, eventually, after the damage from the Cone of Cold, from the Blizzard, keeps pouring in, he will be able to finish off these Giants. He can't play out anything from his hand on this turn, but, uh, you know, coming up... He has the potential to maybe Frostbolt one, maybe uh, Fireball one. He's not in the worst potential spot. Getting off one of the Doomsayers would have been huge, but it hasn't lost him the game yet. The thought here behind what's the thought here behind the uh, the Ancient Watcher now that the silencers are used and there're not really any minions that are going to come in for pushing for damage. What's the thought here between um, for the Ancient Watcher? Hmm. You know I can't say that I'm entirely sure, since you don't need to taunt it up. Right. Um, I guess it's kind of a why not, you know? Okay. You might as well just end the turn with four mana as opposed to six. Okay. I, I, I feel like that's kind of 
got to be a spot behind it. Frost Nova is going to freeze it up for another turn. It doesn't help you kill them, though, which is definitely an issue. So he's stalling maybe for a second Blizzard. You know or what it does issue. do? Uh, if there was an additional Cone of Cold, it prevents him from Cone of Colding both Giants. You know, that's actually very, very real. Ooh, Ragnaros is such a terrible card here. You've got <laughs> two 207s two that are potential targets for it. Yeah. And you do not want to spend time clearing them. <laughs> no, not at all. Although, I, yeah. you may be able to cut, bring it out just because of the potential for facelessing it the next turn. Yes. And you will be able to get rid of both of them, even if you hit both of them with your rag. Yes. That's actually to have really good. That's board. a really nice play. Uh, I, I do like that quite a bit. He could go for it next turn. He's actually going to prepare for Rag. Wow. His lower health giant. Wow. And he's not going to heal his up larger health giant? I don't know if I like that. we got to assume Flame Strikes in the hand, even though it isn't. Yeah, you, you do have to play around that card. Uh, at this point, you are you are losing your giant. Um, also, with the hero power, you would lose your uh, Sun Belcher and Ancient Watcher, which are both... Uh, you know... Not necessarily useless, but not incredibly important. Saving the giant could have been big, but he doesn't have to worry about the flame strike since we actually haven't seen Varanus draw in either or in any of these uh, mage games. Getting the spell damage from this or, or from this uh, blood mage Thalos is really really good. He doesn't have to use his two men on hero power, and so instead he can use it to uh, to play down the loot hoarder. Oh wait, no. Yeah, so he's not going to uh, utilize any of that spell damage, though. I mean, I guess the idea is if um, if the Warlock wants to kill that Blood Mage, go for it. It's just more damage not on my face and another rag target. Yeah, that's very true. Especially since you have to wonder, why did he kill my two Silence Minions? Mm -hmm. The answer has really got to be Ragnaros. Rag. I mean, there's nothing else that Ooh. the Silence Minions threatened blood mage taking one for the team man look at that yeah loot hoarder and blood mage uh Thalnos together took 11 damage for two health was it the loot is... hoarder that that took the rag hit or was it the blood yeah. mage it was yeah the loot he, he sent sludge belcher oh, into okay. blood mage but right. either way that's 11 damage on two health of minions they uh definitely carried the team there brutal that that rag does mind if he rolls need not a cool not cool with that he's played too much world of warcraft and he's not happy oh world of warcraft don't remind me <laughs> that stupid game i want to play but can't i watched the uh trailer for the world of warcraft movie uh Ooh. at blizzcon did you get a chance to see it let's do it, it looks amazing amazing i'm i'm not like i'm first person to say that video game movies are not usually a great idea this looks incredible I'm really excited. And the lead actor, there's a CG actor as an orc and a human actor uh, by a character, is the lead actor from uh, the show Vikings. And we see Archmage come down and a Frostbolt, so we can draw a Fireball. You also, you, you remember what the human's name is? I forget offhand. Lothar. Lothar. That makes some good sense. <laughs> that makes some good sense. Uh, you know, hopefully he does better in the movie than he did in the best of five. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. uh, no, no, he still gave us a good show. I'll always think um, of him as Ragnar Lothbrok from this great show, Vikings, but Lothar indeed. Wait, uh, now's the point where the freeze mage just gets to start doing math. Mm -hmm. And so, if this ice block doesn't get popped this turn, then he just has to fireball, fireball, hero power. Next turn, yep. he can just fireball. Or wait, wait. There's got to be a oh, siphon okay. soul here. There's, yeah. there's just no way you can't do that. And then Siphon Rag's Soul brings him out of double fireball range. Mm -hmm. You know your opponent has at least one fireball because of the Archmage. You don't know that he has a second, but you have to play around it. Uh, since he does, of course, run two in his deck. And now, Varanus actually wins 100% uh, of the time? Yep. Yeah. Because there's, of the there's... nice block and an additional ice block. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no way that's... Uh, that Varanus can lose. He's just going to be able to play out his fireballs, and uh, you know that's if Freeze Mage can survive long enough to get in the direct damage. There's not a lot you can do about it. However, it is pretty fickle. Oh man, Pyroblast just seals the deal. He's definitely going to be able to find the damage, even if he needed an extra turn. With these fireballs and the Pyroblast, he could survive an extra turn with the uh, Ice Block and still be able to deal something in the ballpark of uh, 30 damage. Yeah, and, with his and hero powers. Powder knows he's dead. Uh huh. 
yeah, there's there's nothing Powder can do. He can he can pop the ice block. Um, oh wait, he has Lothab. Oh, the top deck. The interesting. So many. Bosses. It'll be a nine mana fire. Oh, but your opponent has six health, and you have a nine mana fireball. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he can't. He can heal himself. He can heal himself with. He can get up to nine. Well, but he can't pop the ice block. No. He can't. He can't heal himself. And play Lothab. So many possibilities. And pop the ice block all in one turn. He could Jaraxxus. He could Lothab. But none of it is going to be enough. Yeah. With so many possibilities, none of them keep him alive. Mm -hmm. Well, we're almost there yet. It's taking his time, so it's a little anticlimactic. But this uh, is about 95% chance to be a 1-1. And by 95, I mean probably 100, but I just don't want to, uh, well. Okay, he's going to face Taraxxus. But, yeah, you well, just fireball. Well, you just use yeah. one fireball now, and then uh, the next turn you use double fireball. Yeah, and we will be able to heal up, though. So, 18, yeah. Oh, no, I think wait a minute. I think he's wait. still dead. He popped the ice block. So I mean, he, yeah, he ice blocks. Oh, but, oh, but he couldn't low with that. Yeah. He with, so okay. he ice so blocks, he fireballs, fireball. and then even with the heal, he's dead. Wait. No, because now he low with that. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I, I didn't. I didn't calculate the oh 8,000 possibilities at once. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think Varanus, Varanus has faced Jaraxxus. Wow. Varanus had a, a series of, of, I mean, the top decking of the low that enabled this turn. Wow. And, uh, well, there it is. Oh my god. That actually happened. The Alex Lothab does not help him at all because there is way too much attack on the enemy board. Swapping out Lothab and playing it that turn was really nice. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I didn't think Draxus was gonna be enough, but you know, it's just when you get to the point that that's why you have to be able to think so quickly to play Hearthstone, even though the turns feel long. When you're thinking through the key cards like Taunt Givers, incredible, incredible. And we see here Vranis's Druid coming down. Um, he's gonna get rid of Rat. He's gonna get rid of Force of Nature. Keep the Innovate and the Yeti. He wants to get out some big minions early and uh, put some pressure on Powder. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is that Molten Giant going away uh, and the reason is if you fall down to that easy to play Molten Giant threshold you know 15 and below that's exactly where Druid is most comfortable killing you from yep. and so you really need to get an earlier start than get down low and wait yeah when you're when you're getting that Molten Giant point you really want it to be late game if you can and have them use parts of their combo possibly and yeah absolutely Wow, mm -hmm. that Yeti coming out. That turn one Yeti. Yeah, yeah, the turn one Yeti is uh, exceptional. He does have the Ancient Watcher and Owl combo to, uh, you know, deal with some of the minions, but it doesn't deal the one extra damage that you need to the Yeti. That's why five health is so important. In a situation like this, if these minions trade up against each other, then Druid's the one that can deal that one damage, since we don't see a Mortal Coil for Powder here. He does choose to silence it up and go into the Yeti, and then Soul Fire. He overkills it by three and loses the Defender of Argus. That's really expensive, and you know that you could lose one of these minions at any point to a swipe, which we're going to see on turn four. Mm -hmm. Potentially, I, I think it's pretty likely to play the swipe over the Yeti, since you could either bring down four attack and five health onto the board, or you can remove six attack and two health. Yeah, the swipe. <coughs> Excuse me. The swipe's really nice here. Shadow Flame. Well, Swipe's not as nice now, but still probably coming down. Or Wrath. There you go. I think I think Wrath for one is yeah the most likely here. Mm -hmm. uh, really nice draw. The Shadow Flame feels like a really big investment, and it does make it harder to deal with some of these larger minions like Yeti, Cairn, and even Spectral Knight. But you don't have a great way to deal with the uh, Shade of Next Giant otherwise, and so it is a very very responsive play. Brandis does not. He's not afraid of that four damage. Okay, okay. I mean, 
you know that your opponent doesn't have a great hand. It's very, very low on cards. And is he going to trade into the Yeti and use another Soul Fire? That means no, he's just going these face. two Yetis would be one for threeing, essentially. Wow. I mean, I think you don't want to hear. Oh my god, he does. He wants to save these Wraths. So, looks like he's saving all of his direct damage for either the Giant or then potentially for the face. Which is a really uh, interesting strategy. Do you think this will pan out and work out well for him? Yeah, you know what? Double Wrath is a pretty easy way to deal with a, uh, with the Giant. You just need two more damage afterward. And, it, you know, if your opponent spends his whole turn playing a Giant and you can just take it out with a couple of spells, then you can keep up your board control. Uh, Karen is going to be exceptional here, especially after seeing the Siphon Soul mm -hmm. on just a Yeti. That yeah. means that, you know, this 4-5 is going to come through pretty much unchallenged. There's no answer here. Having 5 health, we see again being very important up against the Soul Fire. He gets another Siphon Soul, but of course he can't play it out of 5 mana. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, we're going to finally see that Wrath come down. He chooses the 3 damage, of course, just to easily remove the uh, minion. Then swings into face. He's got some nice direct damage with Ragnaros and with Double Swipe, even with the Keeper of the Grove, which could silence a taunt or deal that 2 damage he may potentially need. He's got his opponent to 18, and if we look at uh, his spells and minions, you know, he's going to be able to deal that with the next couple of turns. Ragnaros on turn 8 to counter the giant. Oh, he's yeah, Rag so come down. Good. Look at that. Go for it. Do your work. And it takes out the giant, the perfect Oof. target. He did not want to bring Oof. his opponent. Well, I don't know. Actually, hitting face would have been nice, too. Because then he could have just swiped for the win, potentially. And he can swipe for the win uh, next turn. He can double swipe for the win. Yeah, that's very true, even if he is uh, healed up. Um, oh, so double gonna... Molten Giant. So he's going to need no. to double swipe, but he will also need two additional damage from the Keeper, so he would need an Innervate. Oh, uh, wait, he's one mana shy of that innovate. And and now it's uh, with the uh, healing. Oh, Force of Nature, Savage Roar. Yep. Got it. Straightforward, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And we have uh, Varanus taking that game three. Okay, so he's finally able to uh, beat up this Warlock, which for a lot of the game had two cards in his hand. He tried... Uh... And to your question, there is... A reincarnate in here, but there is not a Keltazad. Of course, you can expect a Sylvanas, as well as some eggs and other things that can be very well activated. Okay, that's that's interesting, man. He does have reincarnate. Does he have Keltazad? No Keltazad. <sighs> but he does have reincarnate. Hey, you know that's he's that's got pretty. he's got uh, a bloodlust, and he's got some Nerubians. And he calls this the Faramir Shamonk. Okay. Very interesting. I, uh... You know, Faramir is one of the members of IHRTU who's been doing incredibly successfully in tournaments. Uh, mm -hmm. We've seen a bit of him, and I'm interested to see how his Shaman deck ends up. This Manatai Totem is going to meet its unfortunate end to a wrap. Um, mm -hmm. This Manatai Totem having a very similar end to something like a Acolyte of Pain. Yep. Being roughly the same effectiveness, uh, which, you know, isn't bad, but because you coined it out and put a bit into it, uh, it's not going to give you the card draw you really, really wanted. Yeah. And then we've got the Pharaohs coming down directly, uh, challenged by that Yeti. And that will give the Shaman two mana to deal with this Yeti, and you typically want a Rock Fighter here, and he does, clearing off that Yeti, going to face with the other uh, Feral Spirit. Ooh, nice little pickup from Varanus here with a uh, Lothab. Yeah, yeah, you know Lothab's a strong minion right here, and that's where you live what you want to be able to trade down. It also denies a Sludge Belcher pick. That's why Sludge Belcher is typically strong, because of a lack of five attack minions out there. But mm -hmm. when you do have one like, Lo like Lothab in this case, then you have a really good answer to this uh, Sludge Belcher, since yep. you can deal full damage in one wow. swing. Bring down Khan against a Shaman is ballsy, because uh, you can have that Hex, you can certainly have that uh, Earth Shocked, but uh, he's got a really strong board, and I suspect, yep, I suspect we're going to see a Earth Shock 
and a Rockbiter, because the Earthshock and Rockbiter on that 1-2 will get rid of Karn, and then the Feral can get rid of the 5-2, but no, it looks like he doesn't want to do that. I really prefer the Earthshock uh, Rockbiter. Maybe he wants to save it for Alec here for the burst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be using quite a few cards to take out that one, which I think is why he's hesitating just a little bit for that play. If he does go for the Gnomish Inventor, then he might actually go for the one you talked about, but since he went for Sludge Belcher, he's actually just going to leave the Cairn alone for now. Yeah, he will Earthshock it, though, which I like. I mean, at the very least, you don't want to allow um, any opportunity for that um, Bane to come on board. So I think it's a good thing. It doesn't overload you, so you'll have a full seven mana next turn and you might want to play out that full seven mana so you it's a good time to earth shock when you have that one extra mana varan what would you do here though hmm he's he's really got quite a few options uh yeah. he could hero power to take out the sludge belcher along with playing something like the spectral knight he also might do absolutely not anything that i talk about swipe hero power and then keep his the karna as big as he can i like it I don't love it as much because he could have done almost the same thing, but also played a Spectral Knight. Um, yeah. The only difference would be there would be a 1-1 Taunt on the board. Uh, and and his, and his Karn would have... Yeah. yeah, yeah, his card would have one health. And so he does the play to keep Karn alive, but uh, you know he, he just plays more conservatively, which I don't know is what you can always do against a, a Shaman. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's how he chose to play it here. And uh, he will lose his board. And, you know, not be too afraid of what's on the enemy field, but not have a really great way to spend all your mana either. Yeah, and now we're going to see that Spectral Knight. There's not much to BGH in this uh, Shaman deck, so he thinks. Um, but he's right. There is no Keltazad, <laughs> so he's probably pretty familiar with Faramir's deck in this case. No, the beast. <laughs> not as of yet. Ooh, Hex coming down just a couple turns late. He does have it for something like the uh, Ancient of Lore, which I think at this point is probably the best option. But we're going to uh, see a Money Storm here. This will guarantee a kill on uh, the Knight if he wants to do it. He would have to trade both of his minions if he gets a low roll. But he can always get a high roll, and nothing wrong with a high roll. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with Feral Spirits here either. I mean, there's no uh, AoE that does more than one point of damage unless you have a, a Blood Mage into Swipe. And that still is only two uh, damage. Yeah, so and almost no assistance. druids are running blood mage. Yeah, so you're you're not too worried. That's why he chooses to extend so much because druids really lack this AOE clear. Yep, and I like that. It gives you the opportunity to force out the um, the four six to take damage if he wants to do anything at all. Which when with on a, when other minions come down on the board, that uh, lightning storm will be much more effective. Mm -hmm. He. Even though uh, Swipe didn't kill a lot, it did enable him to remove the Azure Drake and yep. kill that uh, that wolf, so it was a really nice response here. Uh, the Keeper of the Grove really making it a strong play. Um, this Healing Totem will be good to keep things out of hero power range, but they do die to what's on the board. And uh, Shaman gets to the point in this game where it kind of runs out of steam. Wow. Well, all right. He, uh... Didn't make a, a, a huge play there. He, he was able to remove the board, but yeah. we just see his board is it's two totems himself. He doesn't have a lot of strong minions in hand besides Alakir, which he really wants to save for later. At this point, uh, this is why getting off something like a Manatide totem early is so important because Shaman just doesn't have that great power plays later on. Yeah, and you'd want to hope to have a board uh, present when Shade comes down so you can Lightning storm it and kill it but with a spell power totem he will have an additional turn to clear it with aoe um at 10 mana though uh, yeah i was gonna say think of four savage combos coming in I, oh th is it exact lethal i think yeah he's just gonna win the game yeah oh why? wait one two away okay of course it's not two away it seemed like he was a little shy but i thought maybe with that frog he had it He's too shy, knowing the Shaman doesn't run typically Alex Straza and any other type of healing. Although I, I do very much favor Alex Straza Shaman in this meta versus Hunter. Um, Alec here is going to come down. He's going to continue to pressure. Um, but... Oh! He, he gets the guaranteed taunt totem there. Yep. And... Oh, no. Black Knight 
Wrath, Wrath is enough. And and Black Knight. Well, no. But he can't no, you, force you of can't nature with it. So yeah. you can force of nature, Wrath, hero power, and that's lethal. Don't wild growth. Please, Varanis. Spot force lethal. Force of nature, Wrath, Please. hero power. Yes, that will do it. Uh huh. You send. There we go. Oh, okay, phew. All right. Oh, you don't even need the hero power, of course. Varanis so taking game number two here. Powder Shaman going down. Okay, so now it is... Uh, Not game number two, excuse me, even, game number three. Even up. So two and two for each player. They both have two more decks to show us before going down. Yep, in fact it is. It is the mirror. I like this pick, and I think you, you agree. And I think it's going to allow us for some fun games. And let's see if either player gets a wild growth. We have certainly an Innervate on one side. Mm, looking good for Varanis. Um, you like to have an Innervate and your opponent has nothing. Let's see what they both uh, mulligan Ooh. for. Sylvanas is something that we don't see in Varanis' deck, and I think it's going to be really, really good in this matchup, since you can trade it into something like an Ancient of Lore and then steal an enemy minion. Um, and if it doesn't get silenced, I think it you know, could be game-changing for Powder if he does draw it. He did have to send it back now because 6 mana is a little bit too costly, yep. but having this uh, Wild Growth in hand is going to be the best possible response to this turn one yeti that Varanus has managed to uh, to claw out. Because it will allow him to get out his minions a little earlier, but certainly right. it's not going to do anything to this yeti, and we're going to see at least four, probably eight damage coming down here. Oh yeah, yeah, this yeti is going to do some work, as we've seen it do uh, for quite a few games here. Um, of course we saw it be an MVP of the handlock matchup, and getting it on turn one here is just so strong, there's no good way to deal with five health early on. Uh, you do have the potential to innervate out a uh, Ancient of Lore the next turn, but this turn, if you would have innervated, your mana would have been left hanging and it would have been incredibly awkward. Yeah. He will be able to wrath this 2-3, which is going to prevent that Yeti from getting killed. And once again, left, left in a tough spot. He can certainly interv at, at this turn innervate out that Ancient of Lore, but he's gonna. He could potentially take an additional four more damage. There's no reason for the Yeti to trade at this point. Yeah, I mean, some call him Yeti. I call him a Pyroblast on steroids. Yeah. Because he has he has done some serious damage here. I mean, he has done almost the full damage of a Force of Nature Savage or combat if he yeah. does it for face now. Which I don't see any reason why he wouldn't. I mean, you could oh, trade here, man. but. Yeah, he's got the initiative, he's got the lead, force your opponent to trade down, and Powder is in a really tricky spot. That's true, this this turn one Yeti was just absolutely outstanding. Uh, now you do have like a great way to take it out, of course with your 5 health minion, because the Yeti doesn't have enough to finish it off, and you have your 1 health protected. Uh, it's not going to be safe enough up against the swipe, but you did... Uh, you, did, you were able to count out the hero power at least. Yep, and that's why really predominantly there just to get rid of the Ancient of Lore, but it did a lot of damage on that 4-6 uh, now, 4-2. Yeah, it also prepares the Druid of the Cloth for the Keeper of the Grove to take it out with the mm -hmm. two damage. Or um, uh, even if it lasts a couple more turns, the Savage Roar and uh, just clear, but yeah, certainly it's more likely to come down, uh, the Druid of the Cloth to come down and finish it off. Or the Keeper of the Grove, excuse me, to shot the Druid. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we're going to see here. He's probably just going to hear about the face afterward. He doesn't want to reveal this 4-4 uh, when it can be so easily taken out by either a swipe or this low that. And so he's just going to, to sit on this for now. It's and a, a tremendous amount of burst damage in the future, especially since he does already have that Savage Roar in hand. I mean, if he had a 4 Savage combo, I mean, that's the thing. He's still... Um, two turns away, two future turns away. So yeah, it doesn't make sense just yet. Yeah, I don't like attacking with it now because say if you draw a Druid of the Claw and on turn eight you could do a Druid of the Claw Savage War combo yep. and just win the game flat out there. You don't yeah. need to wait for uh, Force, Force of Nature. Mm -hmm. And you just lose it too easily at this point to that low that. I wonder how, how much overall life has was missed out on by all these uh, shades never attacking in. You know, in this case, I, I don't think you can call it missed because there's an obvious answer there on the board. Mm -hmm. um, in a perfect world where it gets to attack every turn, sure, he's missed out on a lot, but because you've got to respond to it as soon as it's revealed, 
Um, I don't think he's missing anything here. Powder really fighting back here. Gets an innervate for Varanus though, um, but he's going to need to find ways to clear this board and he doesn't have anything right now. So he's going to draw a couple more cards, try to find an answer here. And he gets both pieces Ooh. of two other potential combos. He has Savage Roar, Innervate, Force of Nature. Um, could also do something like a Hero Power there. Yep. Uh, we really need to see Powder trading here. Uh, at least he's going to throw Lothab into the Ancient of Lore. Um, or potentially swipe it with the, with the spell damage. Both yep. of them are pretty good answers. Yeah, I think you want to keep that Taunt up, which will keep him alive. Because if that Taunt was down, that would have been game right now with an Innervate, Force, Savage combo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Can for sure. Can you still do it, though, now? No. Uh, no. You would only have 14 damage after yep. you take out the taunt. Yep. And uh, that extra three health is going to be really important here. I mean... And Powder actually has lethal next turn. Right. So you've got you've to taunt up this, uh, this Druid of the Claw. You've got to take out the enemy Druid of the Claw. I think you use Force of Nature... Oh, you can't you can't use force of nature and Druid of the claw even with innervate. Right. Yikes. It's running very, very low on options here. I mean Yeah. Hmm. I don't think he he, do, he doesn't lose here as long as he plays very, very responsibly. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to set up for the win in this situation. Especially since you might be expecting your opponent to have at least one part of the combo. We know he doesn't. If your opponent had either part of them, then you would lose in, I think, 100% of scenarios. But with what's in Powder's hand, I think Varanus has at least another turn. I think he's got. I think he's one away from lethal, though. Even if he clears two of these minions, I think Powder, with the Keeper of the Grove and the Hero Power, I think he's one or two away from lethal. So we're going to see Force, Savage Roar, and we're going to see what amounts to, I believe, a full board clear. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's going to go for a full board clear. He's still dead to Force me. Uh, savage combo yeah. um and now now the issue is powder gets the chance to play minions before varanus does so mm -hmm. varanus is always going to have to be responding to powder's minions and powder gets the extra turn to attack face or to trade favorably yeah although uh varanus does have the druid of the claw whereas varanus has used his right right that's that's definitely an important part of here uh doesn't get the charge off, which would have been really, really important to get an extra little bit of damage. Um, hmm. Not sure what he's waiting on. I, I think that this Innervate can be saved since you have the potential to draw more cards in the future, but he's actually going to... I think Innervate Wild Growth. Innervate oh! Power. So, there's one scenario where your opponent has... His in three cards, Force of Nature, Innervate, Savage Aurora. He can then hero power and deal a total of fifteen damage. Yep, and that prevents it. That <laughs> and yeah, that prevents the one scenario he could lose to. And uh, hey, you know, if you can play around it, power to you. Also, um, with that extra damage he just did, with Keeper and his own hero power, if these minions stay alive and there's no taunt, he does exactly eleven damage. But now he heals up to sixteen, so that doesn't apply mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, yeah, that, that heal is uh, real important here. So funny how tactically these players are playing around each other's potential lethals. It's a very delicate game at this 15, 16, 17 health marker. Yeah. What's so cool, though, is that they've both played so much of this class that they know exactly the combinations that they have to face up against, which is why they can make these informed decisions, as opposed to healing unnecessarily or passing up a heal that you desperately need. Yeah. A chill wind. I must safeguard the last. I think you've got to use the damage and then attack it with your Spectral Knight. Um, I, did, I wouldn't use the Eddie here because then it does. Then you keep the two health on the Spectral Knight and it doesn't die to something like Swipe or. Uh, yeah, it's the same amount of damage that you're giving up on the face, but it makes Swipe much less um, juicy. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have one one health on your Yeti, then it can just be Wrath for one. Mm -hmm. uh, probably won't be hero powered at this amount of health. But yeah, he's going to make the right choice here, trading in with the Spectral Knight. And now Rag has a lot of targets, but I don't think it's enough. No. Uh, Drew to the Claw, low at that? Probably yeah. his best bet at staying alive. Yep, it prevents any um, Savage Roar, and then obviously each of these minions... Well, it prevents the Force of Nature Savage Roar. He could still just Savage Roar, which would, which would do it. Yeah. 
yeah, Savage War would would be it. And we haven't seen a Savage War from Powder. Uh, Varanus has already used one when he used the combo to clear. So Although I guess that. you can't Ancient of Lore and then Savage War because of right. the Lothab. So that will help when he Ancients of Lore is for health, which I imagine he will do. Sylvanas. Wonderful Ancient for cards or for health. I've seen one combo, but you've played around the combo at this point. I think you have to keep playing around it. Uh, yeah. That kind of inconsistent play would be, I think, just pretty, pretty weak here. Mm -hmm. I, I I would throw in the Spectre Knight just so it doesn't die to swipe in the future. Um, and then you could... Oh, the issue is you don't, you don't want to use both Yetis. Well, he can play the Shade, which will now allow him to hit me with both Yetis, which I like. Yeah. Wait, my question is, why didn't he use one of the Yetis to go into the Druid of the Claw? And then send his keeper into the Loatheb. It would have been he would have cleared both, but he could have kept a four-one Yeti. Oh, that would have. Wow. I, I, I think that he I think that he did his attacks a little bit too fast there. Hmm. Well, you may be right about that. I didn't catch that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since that Druid of the Call only had four attack. Oh man, he's really hoping that his two-two takes this hit. And yep. and it does. it does. Wow. Okay. Oh, I'm still watching on Powder's point of view, so we're a little <laughs> bit ahead on the stream. You guys just saw me get excited or something you had already seen. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I feel like Powder is in, in a pretty good spot. Sylvanas is usually the best possible answer to Ragnaros. Mm -hmm. Too bad you can't hero power and hit your own Sylvanas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and too bad, yeah, you for the swipe. Yeah, for the swipe, your I own yeah. hero power. Yeah, you, can't, you also can't swipe your own minions, unfortunately. No. No. I've seen. I saw one player try to do that the other day for BM, and he was so disappointed when he learned you can't. <laughs> I think it's because the uh, the one damage would get so confusing. Does it happen to you? Does it happen to your opponent? That they're just right. like, ah, nah. We just wanted to the enemy. No go, no go. Thank you, Blizzard, for keeping it simple for us. Observer mode coming down the pipe in about a month. Oh man, I can't tell you how excited I am. I need to start. I need to put a calendar up on my wall and just mark down the days. Yep. Same time that uh, Goblins and Gnomes is coming, G and G. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I'm very happy that they aren't, you know, hinting towards the announcement of the announcement of the date that they will not release the expansion. Yeah. I, I, I like this this method a little bit better. Okay, so we're gonna get a draw of a swipe, Ooh. which is quite nice. That was pretty necessary, but now there's the 50-50. Do I God. give him a minion, or do I? get closer to killing him. I mean, the problem looks... is that it's two 50-50s. If you hit Sylvanas, then he might take your rag. Yeah, but giving him Yeti is also bad. Of course. Is that what we, we see, it would give him lethal. Because he could hit oh, yeah. him with Yeti and then swipe face. So, In fact, he it's... needs to kill Sylvanas. And he can't. Either way, he loses. Yep. yep. And so Varanus... now Sylvanas and swipe. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say Sylvanas and Swipe is enough. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Powder spots it. <laughs> it looks like he does. Yep. So Varanus' Druid's going down, and he's down to a warrior. Well, alright. Powder, you know, was reluctant to play into this uh, Druid Mirror matchup. He actually went through two decks of his own before he uh, opted into it. But he does manage to claim it yeah, as a way to uh, not ruin it. I must protect and, um, yes, so here we go. Um, I actually wasn't even paying attention, so I don't even know what happened there. Okay, interestingly enough, Firebat actually swung in with the beast a total of two times, but uh, he was still swatted down by uh, by 6 0 on Paladin. It was real nice. interesting. But, Very uh, interesting. Here we are. Varanus has a pretty solid starting hand. I mean, uh, Shield Block, Shield Slam is such a great way to get rid of those five health minions, which we see a lot of in the Druid. Uh, it's one of the best responses to Yeti, and it is mana for mana. Four mana response to four mana. It's very hard to do that up against the Yeti. Uh, the axe isn't quite as important. It can be used to remove a revealed Shade and Axe Ramus, or potentially be an extra bit of damage that you need to finish off a Yeti or a Spectral Knight. 
Oh, so, yeah. Druid has Innervate on the first turn. Or on, I guess turn two for a Yeti. That's, that's, that's surprising. Okay, that's so... Strong. So, yes, so just so you know, as an update, guys, um, his OBS crashed, powders, that is, and he can't come back on the same delay. Um, he's on zero delay, which means we can't watch it because it will not be synced up, which is one of the uh, problems when you have a live tournament, but that is okay because we've got one player. It's why we always have a backup plan, and the backup plan is in effect as his disciple continuing to cast games while I'm dealing with all this technical <laughs> stuff, so thank you so much. Yeah, you know what? We're, we're a team here, and... Mm -hmm. uh, we do our best. Uh, Brandis, unfortunately, has the hero power right now. He has no turn three response to this Yeti. However, he has a couple of good responses. If Powder plays another minion, he can cleave and use his axe to finish off the Yeti. Uh, cleave just doing you know, a little bit additional damage to whatever minion comes out. If it's a Shade of Max Ramus, then he has the perfect... Oh my oh, goodness! Oh, called it! Oh, this he is going to feel it, so good. He's, he's, you can see, like... You can tell how eager they get to play something when their mouse like moves towards the cards immediately, and yeah. you can just feel his relief being able to remove both these cards. So, and so he's still effective. taking so much damage from that Yeti, but but you know when you get that kind of value, it almost makes it worth it. Yeah, yeah, the Yeti did remove all of the armor as well as dealing an additional four overall eight damage total. But you know it's not the end of the world. He could shield block shield slam here, and it looks like that'll be the best way to get rid of it. Yep. Doesn't use all your mana effectively, but you get rid of the Yeti, and that's a bargain in itself. In this matchup as a druid, do you almost always come in cat form instead of taunt form because of the Black Knights? I think so, and that's exactly what he did for you, because that Black Knight would have been such... I mean, I think that would have just won him the game at that point if he could have gotten that much value. Yep. As is, he doesn't have a great response. Unstable Ghoul is a way to deal with it, and, oh, I actually would have thought about hiding it behind or er, putting the the uh, acolyte acolyte of pain right because having unstable ghoul and acolyte is an excellent combo it is weak to wrath but your acolyte's always going to be weak to wrath unless you can get one damage off with your death fight which i suppose is why he played this death fight out right now yeah he still needs an additional point of damage to deal with this five five and harrison is going to come down with the hero power uh yeah, so he's gonna hold off. Oh, okay. I like going face here. I was gonna say, if you're if you're you brought that death spite out early, the goal is that you can, if uh, the five five ancient of lord doesn't trade with Harrison, you can bring down your acolyte and take only one additional hit. So I like that play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has two really good responses to this ancient of lore. However, he is taking a lot of damage, and that's yeah. always something you have to worry about against this druid, which can burst you down if it gets the right draws and has that combo turn nine. There's not a lot you can do to stop it. Sludge Belcher, one of the best responses to the combo, but he hasn't been able to draw it yet. And even though Warriors usually do run it, he's still got a lot of cards to go through. Yeah, and I imagine he's got one extra point of damage here, or he's going to hero power. Um, so, okay, so it looks like he's going to hero power then. So, good thing that he did attack into face here, or else, uh, God, he'd be just taking so much damage from this Ancient of the World, which he already is. Um, but maybe he can get a little extra card draw. It feels like Powder's in a commanding lead right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Powder, even though there were such great responses from Baranis, he it was a, a lot of the turn six was incredibly weak, and he couldn't answer that well. Ooh. Uh, That'll be good for later. Yeah, yeah, having a, having Shield Sam. Well, as long as Powder's able to remove the armor, then Shield Sam won't be as strong on the scene combo with a uh, Shield Block. Mm -hmm. Since, in sense, Druid is so good at dealing damage every turn. Uh, as long as you can keep the armor off of off of this warrior, then you're not too concerned about the shield block or shield slam. Do you think we see um, a Alex Straza next turn, or is it just too much? Oh, wait, forget what I was just saying. I was going to say, or is it just too much going on that uh, you wouldn't be able to? Uh, you'd be afraid of the four savage combo with Alex Straza coming down and Varanus at nine health. He is very near death. Yeah, I I think you've got to just armor up in Sylvanas. You could also. Think about playing uh, no Shield Bearer just as another minion. The, the shield, their armor up Shield Slam is actually such a great way to deal with this uh, shade that yeah. you're silly not to go for it. My goodness. So now it's a question of can you kill him before Sylvanas uh, dies? I must keep her. Scratch that. Answer in hand. Yeah. Druid, probably to face. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't have a way since he doesn't have the mana to finish off the Sylvanas. So what know, about Innervate? What about Innervate Rat? <laughs> that's true. This could that's be game, guys. Not quite, but we're almost there. Powders in a commanding lead gets his own rag, but that will not do enough. So it could be an Alexstrasza, which will bring it back up to 15. Other than that, it would have to be like a a Belcher, Wonder- Armor Smith, and then. God, I don't even know what. I would not be surprised if Powder had a no. Savage Roar in hand. Yeah. Uh, which has nothing to do with the glimpse I got into the future. But hey, that's that's something we would be able to say if we could see Powder's hand. So it's not sure. it's not quite cheating. Should um, we have seen his hand? I bet Varanus, I, I can tell you with utmost certainty, he is going to play a Sludge Belcher and a, <laughs> and a Shield Bear. Well, who knows? Who knows? Maybe he won't. Maybe he won't. Sludge Belcher Armorsmith. I mean, it's the best Sludge, play. Yeah, Sludge Belcher Armorsmith. Of course, yeah. what I meant. Instead of Shield Bear. Shield Bear would be a, an awkward play, especially yeah. in a Warrior deck. And it, you know, if the future is true, if the future doesn't lie, we could be seeing a, a Savage War coming down real soon. Mm hmm. Maybe even this turn it has. Questionable. Has a, has a good chance of giving him lethal. Maybe uh, he can silence oh, up. Oh no! Well, that that's gonna be it, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got Powder maintaining the best of seven spot and taking this victory over Varanus. Varanus, though, taking out Lothar, really nicely done. And the best of seven prize pool, guys, will be up to three hundred dollars next week, and we will have another.